Hi guys! Um, today I listening? thought I would show you how I dial my point shoes. I gave you a little glimpse in one of my previous videos, but I'm gonna do a proper tutorial, I guess, of me prepping my point shoes. It's something every, a lot of, well, every professional dancer preps their point shoes. Um, not all do everything. We all have very different things we like to do to prep them. Me, I do a fair amount, so I will time lapse some of it because it can take me from an hour to two hours. <laughs> um, so I'll time lapse the boring bits and I'll try and get everything else in for you. So, here goes. I'm currently wearing the Freed of London Studio 2s um, in a 6E. Now, I should know, but I don't know. There's an R here, which means something, and there's an H, I think that means heel pin, and it says insole on it. Those are personal adjustments of mine. I'm not sure what they mean, <laughs> but most people would know what they meant. So, I'm going to start by shaving down all the edges on here and scoring uh, the ball of the shoe here so it's less slippy. The shaving down the edges is so that I've got less of a ridge. Um, it doesn't feel so much like a boat. So that's what I'll start with. I have, so this is my giant sewing box which as you can see has, well, it has a lot in it anyway. And it's cute, it's called a stitch in time. I don't know if you can see that. So that's my home one, and then I have a small one which I take to work if I know I'm gonna have a rehearsal that I can sew in or a break. That's what I do. So, we use either a standing knife or an art knife to use to cut the insoles and to cut the satin. Um, off of our shoes um, please if you're not off of age um, do this with an adult supervision or let someone else, uh, someone else do it for you um, don't go wielding a knife around willy-nilly um, this is actually an art knife um, which I bought at Tiger Tiger it's a, like a Scandinavian bits and bobs shop and they had a pack of three for like nothing so <laughs> it's even got a thing like you know if you want to put it on your you know, just in case. <laughs> um, so it's a pack of three and I break them all the time. So that's what I'm currently using. So I will start by Literally all my apartment is pink. <laughs> if not now, when? <laughs> you can see it here. So I will start by just shaving down the edges. Always do it away from you. Watch your fingers or just make sure you've got the number to the ambulance on speed dial. I have cut myself before and it is highly unrecommended. finished so I've taken down all the edges um, so that there's less of a ridge part two score the ball of the shoe this is just for extra grip so I just do it in a crisscross manner across the ball. It also means that when you're putting rosin on the bottom of your shoes, it actually has something to grip to. Like tires on the car, that sort of thing. A trend, if you will. So that, it just gives a much rougher surface. There. Step two, done. So, step three, 
will be to um, take the satin off the toe of the shoe. Um, it gives you a guideline to darn onto. Uh, again, less slipping, which is just always a bonus. With the knife again. Cut in a circle. I do one down the centre and then that just gives me something to lift it up with. It should just peel away if it doesn't get your scissors in there and get the all. Yeah, so I'll just take that off with the scissors. Oh, that's a rough one. Then I'll just neaten up the edges here. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. So then it will look something like that. Now on to the actual darning. I start with, I don't measure it, I start with about this much of a doubled thread. I don't go too long with my thread because when you're pulling it through, as soon as it starts to knot, it's a nightmare. Um, so I don't go too long. I think I have shown you that my needle before, I use a darning needle, they are thicker and stronger and they curve to the shoe. As just, well, it's a curved needle, so it's, I, I find it much, much easier. They are actually for darning, I use them for everything. Um, it takes a minute to get a hang of it, but. So I double my thread, it's just stronger. Bite the end to get it through the eye of the needle and just knot that on the end. Straighten it out so you haven't got any twists in it because that would be a nightmare when you start sewing. And we're ready to go. I actually go in for my first one um, in one of the creases. So it just means that the knot sits then in the crease and you don't have an extra lump where your knot would be. So one thing I do use is, um, I do use a thimble, but I can't, I really struggle using um, metal thimbles, which are traditional ones. So I use these rubber ones. Now it was a pack of five, one for every finger. God knows what you'd be uh, sewing that you'd need one on every finger. I just put one on my thumb and sometimes if I'm high in sewing, I'll put something here because I tend to get blisters here if I'm sewing a lot. So I use a rubber thimble. I just got these on Amazon, I think. I'll link it below where I got them from. Super cheap. Just protects your thumb a little bit so that's what that is so I've gone into the crease here I'll pull that all the way through and then I'm going to go maybe half a centimeter over leave for the first one leave it on the left hand side of the needle and just pull through I, tr I do try and tuck in the ends of the knot there, but we're going to go around again so you won't see it afterwards. Wait, here's the first stitch. Another half a centimetre over here. Now we're going to pass the, the thread to the other side and pull through again and you start to get... Um, this knotted effect here. So this is this is called a blanket stitch. Again, another I can't see shiny. Another half centimetre over. Leave the thread at the back and pull through 
bit of a knot. So a couple of things to be wary of. Every few goes, just straighten, straighten out your thread um, so that you're not getting knots. I don't pull too tight because I don't want the satin to bunch. I want it to just sit exactly where I've cut it. So um, it, it'll tighten up on its own with the circle, the, the sewing in the circle anyway. So you don't need to worry about it being so tight. And also you don't want really squished up darning. You want some a, a decent height on your darning. I was going to say girth, but girth would be width. With regards to how far, how deep I'm sewing, when I'm on this circular bit here, all of this, I'm only going through the satin. I don't go into this, um, this canvas section until I get here and then I just do it every couple of stitches just so that I don't have this satin flicking up. When it's all done, you start dancing. If this is folding down, that's going to be really annoying because it just creates an extra edge not in the right place. So here I will start going into this canvas, but around here I'm only going through the satin. So I've done a full circle there with the blanket stitch and you can see the wood just, just starting to come here. Um, so I've gone until exactly one go around. This is the, the first knot from the beginning. So now to switch to the next, if you've got thread left, don't waste it. Now to switch to the, the next style of stitch. I go in once under the satin, just behind everything and forward so that you don't lose your knot here. So we're now at the bottom of the shoe. And then we're going to go in again, not knotted, not looped or anything, just straight in next to that. Again, keep going forward and pull it through. So now I will start the uh, complete looped stitch that I do. So you're going to go right next to it, very close. Keep the thread on your left hand side, the left hand side of the needle if you're going around anti-clockwise, which is what I'm doing. And just pull that in. And again, right close next to it. Thread on the left. So you're not actually going around the needle, you're just keeping it on that side of it. That just, over time, I've realised that having the thread on that side just prevents me knotting. So that's why I do that. So I've reached the end of my thread here now and to change the thread I'm going to thread the needle until halfway down your blanket stitch so it's sort of central, doesn't need to be so close. Just pop that through there and then I'll just cut that and knot it tightly. So double knot that and I'll just cut the ends off a little bit. I leave a little bit to, able, to be able to sew it back in. So that's what your knot will look like. Same amount of thread. 
just to keep going with that. I actually bite the end of the thread, a lot of people just wet it. I actually bite it to make it really flat, especially when you're using a thicker thread. So to join back in with uh, this one, it's much easier. Just go to where your last stitch was, straight in there, the same level, very close. Pull it through. And then again, keep it on the left hand side if you're going anti clockwise. And just pull it through. Keep the knots on the right so that means you'll, you'll start sewing over them. Thread on the left hand side of the needle. and then you will start sewing in the knots. And you will eventually start sewing in the knots here. So continue with that all the way around. Um, if you're running, if you run out of thread, just do the the cut and knot and re-thread like I showed before until you're finished. So, I've finished one shoe. So I'll just show you where I put my ribbons and my elastics. I don't even know what step we're on now. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say six. So I don't actually, ooh, I'm hoping I've got enough ribbon. <laughs> ribbon. I measure ribbon on my ankle because that's where it's going to go. So, let me see. Put it here. Inside one is longer than the outside one. So I just measure it right around the ankle. I won't say certain measurement because everyone's ankles are different and I know people tie their ribbons in different places as well. I tie mine on the inside, just between the ankle bone and the Achilles. Ooh, need some more ribbon. So, I use the same thread, doubled up, it's thick, so this I, this thread is never broken on me. I won't use cotton or anything like that because as soon as I do a demi point, it's it's snapped. So the shoe. I place my ribbons. I have always done it the same way. It's how I was taught by my teachers to do it, and I have never changed it because for me it's the best position. Fold down the back of the shoe from where the insole is, and it creates two lines here. You can mark it with a pen, I don't bother anymore. Dial pencil. And that crease will give you the centre of where your ribbon will sit. So, I will sew it here. Pointing this way, not pointing this way just secure that with a pin so it's the, the ribbons will sit um, angled down towards the toe of the shoe not angled up towards the front of the shoe if you do that 
when you tie it, you'll get a bag. It'll go baggy here because you want it to go front around the ankle and around like that, not back around the ankle. Tray on point point. So that is in the crease. I actually don't sew mine that far down, not even an inch actually. If you want, if you want your shoe um, pulled up closer to your foot or just for a, a snugger fit, you can move it down. You can move it further down and sew it all the way up. For me, it doesn't, it hasn't made that much of a difference and I don't really wear them long enough to, <laughs> I say I don't wear them long enough to bother with that effort. Obviously this looks like a lot of effort. But everything I do has to be worth it. If it's going to take me longer or use more resources, it needs to be worth it. So I am just, I don't know what the stitch is called, just a normal sewing stitch. Just loop that round here. As I get to, toward the drawstring, so I'm just, just loop stitching it here. As I get to the drawstring, I actually sew into my drawstring. I I always pull my drawstring very tight with just a general fear for the shoes falling off the back of my heel. Um, and much to my physio's delight, obviously that can cut into your Achilles somewhat. And I already do my Achilles, um, I already do my Achilles tight. I already do my ribbons very tight anyway, so I do get inflammation in the Achilles due to that after like a swan leg or something, it's not great. So I actually now sew into the drawstring, so it means that all of this is pulled up, but it means that the, the bit around your Achilles is not pulled tighter, so it means that it's not cutting directly into your Achilles from the front knot here, it's only pulling the rest of the shoe up. So, I will go in here and I'll just do a couple of stitches across trying to find where the actual drawstring is and I'll do a, a, through, a few stitches through it to secure it in place. It's probably at the top. And then down the other side. Knot it and cut it. So that is my finished sewing with the ribbon inside. It's not neat, it doesn't need to be. And I don't go through the satin here, I, but I do go through that drawstring, so. Ta-da. One out of four done. So I'll do the same on the outside. I say outside because I have a longer ribbon because of where I tie my ribbons and how, and how I go around them. My inside ribbon is longer. Some people's are equal. I don't know. Mine one is longer. It's also easy because when you hold it up, you know which foot is which because the inside is longer. So that's the ribbon. Elastic. I will always put elastic on the backs of my shoes to secure it to the foot just that little bit more um, to stop it falling off the back of the shoe. If I'm using elasticated ribbons for rehearsals, I don't actually need to put elastics on the back. But a performance, I would never go on stage without elastics on the back. So if it fell off, I'd never forgive myself for being so lazy. So this elastic, I actually just buy this at the local sewing store. It's quite thick, but it doesn't cut in anywhere. I don't like the mesh elastic because one, once you've used it once, it goes all fiddly anyway. And this I can reuse and reusing and reuse. And it's ballet pink, so I don't have to colour it. it. It matches well enough to the tights that it's fine. I do have like big rolls of other elastic. This is fine for rehearsals, but if I'm wearing this on stage, then obviously I have to pancake it. Pancake means colour it to your skin tone. 
with pancake. So for the elastic, again, angling it forward because it's gonna go forward around your ankle. I actually sew these to the outside. Now, I always hated that because I always thought it looked up messy on other people. But since I started using elastic all the time, if I put it on the inside, just because of where the shoe sits on my foot and I don't wear tights over my heels in rehearsals, I get blisters from the, from the thread and from the knots and from the extra thing inside. So I just put it on the outside now. I do it fairly neatly. Um, yeah, so providing whoever you're dancing for doesn't mind. Keep it neat. So I just go a smidge behind the ribbon. I say a smidge because it really is a smidge. I don't have it too far back. I have it about here. And not so far down because again, it's on the outside of the shoe so you want it as neat as possible. Same stitch as I used with the ribbons. And again, I will go through the drawstring. Oh. See, not a thread. That is my ribbons and my elastic. So I will obviously do a ribbon on the other side and then position this elastic so it will look like this in the end. Um, so that's me sewing my shoes. Let me know if this was helpful at all and if you do have any other requests or recommendations for tutorials, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to uh, have your feedback and know what you'd be interested in seeing. I will do another, these shoes aren't ready to go into class yet. Um, we, I break them in slightly before I wear them in class. I always break my shoes in in class. Some people don't, some people prefer a softer shoe for class, harder shoe for rehearsals. I like to train in a, I, I won't wear a shoe for a rehearsal naturally if I haven't done class in them or if I haven't broken them in. Um, we actually hammer them to make the, to dull the sound. I break them in a few places um, and get them uh, more to the shape of my foot. So I will do another video for that uh, very soon so you can see that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you have enjoyed watching this and would like to see more. And I wish you a lovely day.